Today, we're gonna to talk some beginner fundamental Linux basics. Stay tuned. Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is Zach with IT Career Questions. And before we begin today's video, I have two things for you. The first one is that this video is sponsored by Linux Academy. If you guys are looking to learn Linux like I am, I highly suggest that you go down to the description of this video and click on their link. The second thing that I want to talk about is also in the description. It's a link to join my mailing list. And if you guys join that, I will pick somebody from random to win a nice cool box of free stuff from Linux Academy. So go check those two links out in the description. I would greatly appreciate it. In this video, I just wanted to cover a few of the basics that I've learned so far and give you some understanding of what Linux is like. If you guys haven't watched my previous video on Linux, I highly suggest that you also check out that video. There's another link in the description for that. It'll keep you up to date on this series and help you going forward. But let's get into this video right now. So right now I just wanna go over a couple comparisons. If you've been familiar with the Windows operating system or the Mac operating systems, Doing this little comparison can greatly help you have a better understanding of it. The Mac operating system is going to be the closest relative to Linux as they are both based off of Unix in some way or another. So right now on my screen, I have an instance of CentOS, a virtual machine running from the Linux Academy website. And this is one of the GUIs that you will see within the Linux distributions. Uh, GUI is the graphical user interface. If you've been familiar with Windows or Mac OS, you know that every time that you log into one of those machines, you are hitting the GUI. You're hitting that graphical user interface all the time. The biggest difference between Linux and Mac and Windows is the fact that Linux is very heavily terminal based in a lot of the different commands and things that you can do. A lot of the end user machines that would run Linux are gonna run some type of GUI version of it. But in an administration level of Linux, you're gonna be in the terminal very, very often. And there's nothing really intimidating about that. You can see similarities within the GUIs of Linux and the Mac OS. And if I pull up a couple different things here, you can kind of you kind of see that and understand that. But it, it looks very similar, right? There you have your uh, you have your folder structure. You have kind of your different options at the top of the screen, much like the Mac OS, right? So by comparing the two operating systems just a little bit, you can see that Linux isn't that intimidating within the GUI. So as I kind of said before, in a business environment, you may find yourself in the CLI, the command line interface, much more often bashing away than you would in any other instance of different, different operating systems that are out there. Windows, of course, you're gonna be in PowerShell a lot. You might be in the command prompt a little bit. And Mac, you will also be in the terminal sometimes if you are doing any type of administration. So we are going to show you some of the basics that I've learned so far from going over the LPI Linux Essentials course. And to really help you get a better understanding, I'm gonna do some comparisons as well here and show you uh, within the terminal and then within the GUI of this. So right now we're just gonna go ahead and open up the terminal. And now that we have that open, uh, we'll move this over, shrink it down a little bit. So you can see from the GUI, we have different folders, we have some different files and things like that. And we could see that, right? We could see that just fine, but from a terminal, if you didn't have a GUI, you were just logged right into the terminal, we wanna see what's in these different folders. We wanna see what structure we have here. So one of the commands that we can use is called ls. So we can type in ls and hit enter, and this is going to give us our listing of what's inside of our current directory. So you can compare the GUI and the terminal here and see that we could see all of the same folders and files within the GUI and in the terminal. Say we didn't know where we were at within the terminal. You log into a terminal and you don't know what directory you're in. If you type in dollar sign PWD, this is going to give you the printout of what directory that you are currently in. So if we go to the GUI and say we click on desktop and go inside there, there's nothing there. Let's, uh, let's create a new folder in here. We're just gonna call this folder test. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change directories. We already know we're in the home user uh, directory. So if we type in CD uh, and then type in desktop and hit enter. Now we do uh, dollar sign PWD. We can see that our directory is changed to desktop. And one key thing that I really need to point out about Linux, when you're in the terminal, it is case sensitive. So if I were to type in dollar sign PWD lowercase, nothing is going to happen. It's not going to work because I, I didn't make the PWD uppercase. So that is one really big thing that you need to know about Linux is that it is very case sensitive. So now that we are in the uh, desktop folder, if we type in LS again, 
we can see that the folder that's inside there is called test. That's the folder that we created from the GUI. And now we can see that within the terminal. So if you go back in the GUI to home, we can see all of our folders and files there. And if we wanted to go back within the terminal, we could type in CD space dot dot, and that's going to bring us back a directory. So we could type in dollar sign PWD, and now we're back in home user. And then we could type in LS, and we have our printout of what is inside of this folder, of this directory that we're in. If we wanted to see if there's any hidden files or folders, we could type in ls space dash a, and this will give us a listing of all the hidden files and folders. Much like the Windows operating system when you have to go in and you have to actually check the box to show hidden files and folders, this is what you could do within the terminal. And you could see here that every file that has a period in front of it, that's a hidden file. So we're not seeing that in the GUI, but we could see that in the terminal. So that's something that's really important to know. If we wanted to go inside of one of these folders, uh, we could type in cd, Local, we could, <clears throat> if we wanted to go inside of one of these files, we could type cd space period local. So now we are in the local directory and we want to see what's in there. There's just a share folder in there. We can go inside that share folder by typing cd space share. Now what's inside this folder? And here's more, more files and folders within there. So this is kind of an understanding of how that, that you can navigate through the, the file structure from the terminal and you know from being in windows or the mac os you're just kind of clicking through folders and you can create folders really easily you can create files really easily but from linux and the terminal it's a little bit different but it's still pretty easy to do once you get this general understanding of it so let's talk about making a folder right if we type in mkdir and then space and then the folder name let's call this folder test that's our that's this is going to be our test folder we hit enter, we could see in the GUI that that popped up right away. Now, if we type in LS within the terminal, we can see that it's also showing there as well. So what if we wanted to create a file? If we wanted to create a file, we use the touch command. So we just type in touch space, and then the file name, we'll just call this file name, all one word, lowercase. And you could see from the GUI, now we have a file name file. If we click inside of the file name file here, that's kind of hard to say, right? You can see that it's blank. There's nothing there. So we just created the file. We didn't put anything in there. So we'll go ahead and close that out. And, you know, if we wanted to do it from the GUI, we could type whatever we wanted inside of that file and save it. But what if we wanted to do it all from the terminal? Because we're, we're pretending that we are a Linux administrator right now. If we type in N-A-N-O and then space, so nano space and your file name and hit enter. This is going to bring up an interface within the terminal that will actually let you modify the text that's inside of there. So think of what we're seeing right now as just a simple basic text editor. So right now we're going to go ahead and put our information within this file. We're going to put in uh, Linux Academy helped me learn this. And then we can type in uh, control X and that's going to let us save it. So we could say yes, we're going to save it file name to write to you. But from here, we can change the file name. So let's say we are going to call this uh, Linux Academy. Hit enter. Or hit yes, sorry. And now we can see that we have a Linux Academy file. And we're going to go ahead and open that from the GUI. So we can look at it and say, yep, Linux Academy, Academy helped me learn this. So let's go ahead and close that out because we want to be able to see this within the terminal. So if you type in C-A-T, which is cat, this will let us actually read what's in this file. So we type in our Linux Academy file and it will print out the information within that file. So that is very important to know because if you are doing any type of administration work from a Linux machine, you may run across some like different readme files um, that will give you information about an application that you're trying to run, that you're trying to work with, or give you information about kind of the directory that you're in as well, depending on your different environments that you're in. So the cat command is very, very important. Let's go ahead and do another LS here. We could see we have a VNC how-to. So if we type in CAT VNC how-to, hit enter, this is going to give us all the information within that file right there. Uh, but what if we wanted to remove a directory? We could type in RM space dash uh, D, and then we're gonna type in test for our test folder. And you can see that now from the GUI, that folder is gone. If we do another LS, we could see that the folder is gone as well from there. So with the RM space dash D, that removes a directory. Say we wanted to remove a file. So we can do another LS, we can see that our Linux Academy file is still there. 
we type in rm space dash f and type in our file name linux academy this will remove our linux academy file now let's say that we wanted to move a file which again is another important thing that you, you should definitely know as far as the basics are concerned if we type in mv space our file name and then the folder and then we do another space and then the folder name so we're going to do desktop mv file name desktop so now we could see from our gui the file name file went on to our desktop and if we click in with inside this folder we could see that we have our two folders here or we have our folder and our file name there as well and then if we do an ls we could see that file name is no longer there so if we do a cd and go to desktop and do another ls we could see from our terminal the folder and the file name uh, that we had moved so these are just a few of the basic commands that I've learned so far as I've been learning Linux. I know that they could greatly help you as well. There are many more commands that I'd like to go over. So if you guys are interested in more videos on Linux commands and learning some of the basics, hit me up in the comments below and let me know because I'd love to do more videos talking about this as I'm learning as well because this is fun for me. This is something that has been really interesting to me because I've always, as I said in my last video, been intimidated by Linux. And I'm not anymore. Like, I understand this. Going over the course on Linux Academy and actually being able to follow along on one of the VMs that they offer is perfect. It's really easy to actually understand if you can follow, do the same things that they're showing you on the screen. And then, of course, you can actually play around and try to screw things up, which that really helps in that learning process as well. So before I end this video, I want to talk about the most important command that you can know. And if you ask anybody who is familiar with Linux, you know, what you should know. They are going to tell you that you need to learn the man command. That's right, it's just M-A-N. The man command will help you learn more about the Linux operating system and a lot of the different commands with inside that. So we've gone over the LS command a few times. So if I type in M-A-N space LS and hit enter, this is going to give us a nice little overview of what the LS command does. So if we type in Q for quit to get out of that, say we wanna type in M-A-N, space p pwd this is going to give us more information about that command as well if there's any point in time where you're not sure what a command does or where you can find those commands and things like that using man will definitely help you down that path it's kind of a running joke that you tell somebody to learn the man command but it is very helpful if you're trying to understand some of these different basics and different commands and things like that so i hope you guys found this video useful again if you're looking to learn more Hit up the links in the description, check out Linux Academy's website, join my mailing list so you can maybe win some free stuff. And if you guys wanna learn more about Linux from me, where I could talk about some of the basics that I've learned so far and talk about my path of learning so far, we can definitely do more videos on that. So hit me up in the comments below. As always, take it easy.